welcome. Um, and uh, thank you for joining us on this uh, snowy day. Um, it, it, was quite, it was quite a little surprise this morning um, but uh, for some of us. Um, but uh, we thank you for joining us. And I'm really excited to see a big crowd here. Um, so platform engineering, as we're all aware, is a pretty new discipline. It's a, it's, and uh, there's a lot riding on it. There's a lot um, riding on it in terms of pro developer productivity. There's a lot riding on it in terms of developer productivity that leads to business value. Um, we're also in a time when uh, costs are being cut, when uh, uh, engineering organizations are really under the gun to uh, show their value, uh, the value of what they do. And uh, so there's a lot at stake. And um, what we're going to talk about today with our, our illustrious panel is how you can set yourself up for, for uh, success in platform engineering and also um, how you can show value to, uh, to all the stakeholders, people in the C-suite, um, and also the developers who, who and engineers are going to be using that platform. Um, so without any further ado, we're going to get started. We're going to have a really lively discussion. Um, I'm going to bring everybody up now, and then we're going to introduce them one by one. Um, Mallory Haig from Humanitech. Um, there, <laughs> um, Guillaume Kaya from Workly. Kirk Hogetson from Bamboo HR. And a guy you might know, Nathan Harvey from uh, Google Cloud. And we're going to actually. Yeah, distribute. Yes. Oh, yeah. Distribution of the microphone. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's almost there. So, um, okay. I guess we're going to, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, first of all, uh, that mic is not on. It's yeah. not. This one? Oh, yeah, we this should one's working. Oh, there we go. They're on now. Here you go. Are they on now? Let's try that one. Okay. What number? Oh, no, that one is not working. So. This one? Oh, that's working. That Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, so just to so we're going to introduce people one by one. We're going to start out out on the end. There, uh, Mallory Haig from Humanitech. Mallory, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do at Humanitech, please? Sure. Uh, great to see everyone here today. Nice big room. Uh, so, hello. Uh, my name is Mallory. I am the head of customer success at Humanitech, but also a engineer by background. Um, and my job is to basically make sure that I help the folks that use Humanitech understand how to be successful with it, but also how to be successful in platform engineering. You will see me a lot around the platform engineering community, including teaching uh, some of the platform engineering certification courses, especially where it comes to these areas of understanding how to measure success uh, and how to plan and execute your initiative very well. So that's why I'm here today. Excellent. And. Uh uh, Guillaume uh, Cava from Workleap. Can you tell us a li little bit about what you do at Workleap? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I'm work at Workleap. I'm working as a dev within our uh, platform team. So my job really is, uh, well, I was there when we started uh, that practice at Workleap, and then it's really building the platform and working towards uh, having adoption within our uh, different products and the dev team. So I'm really, let's say, uh, on the ground there uh, working for the, uh, for the other devs. And then we got uh, Kirk Hoganson from Bamboo HR. Kirk, yes. can you tell so, us a little bit about what you do? Certainly. So uh, I'm Kirk. I work for Bamboo HR. I'm their systems architect. Bamboo HR is a HR services company located here in Utah. And I'm focused mostly on their Kubernetes infrastructure, their platform engineering initiatives, and microservices. And uh, Nathan Harvey. Hi. Thanks. Uh, my name is Nathan Harvey. I lead up Dora at Google Cloud. Maybe you've heard of Dora. She's an explorer, carries a backpack. <laughs> yeah, some of you have. Great. Not that Dora. It's the uh, Digital Operational Resilience Act. Have you heard of that one? It's not that one either. Uh, Dora is a research program that's all about how do teams get better at delivering and operating software. And so that's what I do. 
Okay, and um, just uh, we're here obviously at Platform Engineering Day because we're interested in platform engineering, but it is a new discipline that's kind of, dis to many of us it can feel a little bit like uh, building the plane while flying the plane. So um, before we get started, I just want to kick off uh, just a quick, your quick one-line definition of platform engineering. Let's start with Mallory. Mm, test. Um, for me, platform engineering is a practice that is about enabling humans behind computers to do the work in the best way possible while not hating each other, is realistically how I see it. <laughs> That's good. All right, that was good. Uh, I would say <laughs> platform engineering for me, I see it as um, it's a practice that aims to build a uh, tool suite that's targeted at uh, primarily devs to try and uh, make their life uh, easier so they can focus on what's important for them, uh, all the while improving their experience. Kirk? I think of platform engineering as the evolution of DevOps, or another way of putting it is the processes of treating the platform like a product. And, and Nathan. All right, I think it's a socio-technical system, uh, like so many of the systems that we work in are. Uh, and platform engineering is a set of capabilities that help teams use technology to further the goals of their business, to help their users, and so forth. OK, and uh, Nathan, I'll start with you for this question. Um, how do you define success in, in a platform engineering initiative? Oh, that's a really good question. How do you define success? Uh, I think it really depends on where you are in the journey. If you're just getting started, you're going to have different measures of success, maybe things like adoption onto the platform, then maybe as you're further down the line with platform engineering. Uh, if your platform is more mature and your practices are more mature in your organization, you might start thinking about things like, what is the business impact that we're having? And of course, uh, as, as a representative of Dora, we also have to think about the software delivery performance metrics that you're able to impact. So with a platform, are we able to ship faster? Are we able to ship safer? And so forth. Okay, and we're gonna get, we're gonna get into the metrics and what to measure and how to measure it a li little later. Uh, anyone else wanna talk about uh, how you define success? Yeah, and I think um, Nathan makes a very valid point. Platform engineering success is about so much more than just the technological teams that interface with platforms. The reach is so broad. It goes to the entire business. It touches finance. It touches security. It touches executives. It touches salespeople. It touches your end user. When things are done efficiently, securely, uh, in a way that makes it easier to get things done quickly, I think you're able to see impact across a lot of different places. And when we define success with uh, the folks that work with us, a lot of it is really understanding that business value and how you can take that and bring it down to the deepest technical layers of what you're working on, for sure. Okay. Anyone else want to jump in on how to find success? Uh, maybe I can say uh, if you're uh, early on within your uh, platform engineering practice, <laughs> success sometimes uh, just looks like uh, any kind of adoption or uh, of what, what you're building is uh, early on a success. Any longing for that you can catch uh, can lead to uh, good success. Um, I want to start with Kirk this time. Um, so let's talk about metrics and what kind of what kind of metrics can you use and and how can you uh, how can you measure them and are they what we think they are? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. And I think that counterintuitively, the most important metrics for your platform aren't coming from the platform itself. They're not coming from within the platform. They are how is the platform impacting the business. And they kind of break down into, into quantitative and qualitative or kind of like squishy metrics and things that are a little bit firmer. And this, the squishy metrics are things like developer cognitive load. Are we able to reduce cognitive load for software engineers? They're things like uh, satisfaction. Things you might track with like a net promoter score kind of a metric. And then there's harder, kind of firmer metrics, which are things like how many applications or services have we been able to onboard to the platform? How, how wide is the business impact that way? Uh, things like have we been able to improve this velocity of development? So it used to take a week to get uh, a service like a database, and now we can do it in a self-service way and it's faster. So, the way you measure those depends on uh, what your business goals are. And I think when you're starting, it's important to establish a kind of a baseline. Even for the squishy things, it's easy for us uh, nerds to kind of jump into the technical part of it and say, how do I solve these technical problems? 
when if you really want to track success and have the right metrics, you want to establish what's the baseline right now before we adopt these technologies in terms of their business impact. So it's how does this platform impact the business, not what's coming out of the platform that are the most important metrics to track for your long-term success so that this thing you're building and spending all this time and effort on actually will get adoption and actually will grow with the business and become something that you will reach the vision that you have for it. Um, Mallory, did you have some thoughts about metrics? And I always have thoughts about metrics. <laughs> um, there are a lot of things you can measure, and Dora is one of those things that we always recommend measuring, uh, knowing, though, that it takes time to see change. So we think about metrics um, exactly like Kirk was saying. There are those soft, fluffy things. There are those more emotional metrics that are important to gather. There are also things you can quantify. You can quantify things like complexity. You can understand the amount of steps a process takes now versus what happens once it is part of your platform. Those are the sort of things we like to quantify. Um, we also look at you know, just sort of general feedback in terms of day-to-day -day experience. So there is that net promoter score por uh, portion. But one thing I can't stress enough is how important it is to just ask how people feel in the day-to-day -day interactions. You know, um, there's a lot of throwing things over fences, and that can lead to a lot of frustration. It is sometimes a hard conversation to have inside of an org to ask how people feel about an experience. It can be very painful, but it's the right thing to do. When you're building a platform, you're treating it like a product, those folks are your customers. Ask them for their feedback, um, and it will really, really help you measure how you're doing. And it, it sort of goes into the, your, your um, definition of platform engineering is basically how not to get, not to the peop you. Not to get people to hate you. <laughs> like, like, um, so let's talk about those initial conversations because they kind of laid the groundwork for later success and make sure you're building the thing that people actually need. Um, Guillaume, do you want to start, start us off talking about how to have those initial conversations with stakeholders? Yeah, yeah, I think... Um well, we ju uh, just said it uh, pretty well, but it's uh, really important to have discussions with your, uh, with your users, which uh, in this case are uh, mostly devs. So speaking from experience uh, for, and coming from a technical background, really one thing is very simple. Like uh, Anytime you have a discussion with a dev, since you're speaking the same language, you're doing mostly a very similar job. Any discussions can lead to really uh, interesting insights into what their pain points might be, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to come up with. And then that can lead to uh, yeah, really good insights into what you can do to improve uh, their day-to-day, -day, um, what they have to do. Uh, then from, from what we were uh, doing at WorkLeap, we did a lot of uh, user interviews, sometimes based from discussions or just seeing things in like Slack. You really, got, you really have to be attentive uh, to what, what's happening and then try to come be proactive into uh, getting that feedback from people, uh, reaching out to them, making them feel heard uh, is something that I think uh, really works well and that we've seen uh, sometimes people, they have opinions about certain things but then they're not necessarily expressing it <laughs> publicly but then when you go to them, uh, that's when you really start to get the good stuff. Uh, so. Yeah, engage in a uh, discussion like this. Uh, we've had also uh, reached out to people to come temporarily within our team to try and uh, get them as promoters uh, for what we're trying to do. Um, yeah. I think, I think in addition to that, we have to remember that platform engineering and, and adopting platforms is an investment. So it is important that we talk to the, the end users of the platform and we're serving them, but we also have to partner with leadership within our organization so that we can get budget and funding and headcount. And we have to understand what, what matters to them, what pains are they trying to overcome, and, and then we can talk about how the platform can help drive towards some of those. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Like, I think one of the very easy pitfall you can uh, fall into being a technical person is thinking that you know what they want because you come from the same background as them, but actually you don't. <laughs> you don't really know what their <laughs> problem is. So yeah, just not making any assumptions, being really open to uh, their feedback and uh, humble. Actually, within uh, our team, it's uh, something that I think was really good from the get-go. We started in, um, let's say, 
put up some principles in place like with, within the full team that we, or uh, yeah, guiding principles uh, that we had to be open to yeah, all the feedback, really hearing people out, being humble, and not, not making pre-assumptions about uh, what we think we know. Yeah, I think it's really important not to just rely on those, those assumptions, mm -hmm. because it's very easy to do, especially when you, you are aware of your pain points that you'd like to solve. So it behooves you to start broad and talk to everybody you think is going to be using this platform later, like in five years. Who's, who's eventually we plan to use this? And gather all that data as a goal for a long-term strategy. And then to narrow that focus for your MVP to a small group of allies within your organization that you know is maybe a little more tech forward, more interested in adopting something new, or whose pain points you can more directly resolve. Build something smaller for them that you know is going to get some adoption and you can have some, uh, a really good partnership within your organization with whatever that group is, and then they can become your allies and they can become uh, champions of the platform internally, and that'll be the beginning, the seed of driving the, the grander adoption that you have as a bigger strategy. Sort of, uh, that does lead into a conversation or, or question I had about getting people to adopt it. It sounds like part, it's finding those, um, those sort of more tech tech forward people, the sort of the the leaders in in, in different teams, or um, kind of once the cool kids are doing it <laughs> or seeing results, then then it becomes more um, desirable to there's more initiative to to join. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think having uh, those those finding those key per persons within uh, different different teams will help greatly uh, because uh, it makes it. Well, not that it makes it seems, but uh, they, ju they just uh, propagate that, th those um, offerings that you have way better than if you're trying to uh, push it on two teams. Like, uh, the, the, the feeling will be different, the reception will be, will be very different, and people will be way more inclined, uh, I think, to uh, adopt certain offerings that you have, uh, seeing uh, other, other uh, people from there uh, working with them that have adopted it and having a good experience with uh, what you're doing. That really works great. I have another interesting point that you kind of just reminded me of. One of the things I think that's really important in terms of being successful with platform engineering is making sure that you prioritize the teams you're bringing on correctly. And this can mean different things in different organizations, but one thing I see a lot is that people forget about the teams that have already adopted Kubernetes and are struggling. Those are the teams you want to help as soon as you possibly can. Those are the folks that really need a platform. Um, they need that layer of abstraction away from what is very complex. This is actually why I stopped working as an engineer, uh, was because it was just like, it was too much. And those are the teams that really should be the focus. You know, it, it is nice to also have these, these kind of evangelical teams that are able to go out and shout from the rooftops. We want those guys too, but don't forget about the ones that are struggling and have clear pain points. Because so much of this is also about having a pain point, finding a way to address it, and making that experience better. And when you have that, you will build champions, absolutely. Yeah, Mallory, that is a really good point. That's a really good hint about where to find those teams, is who's struggling with Kubernetes now? Uh, because, for example, in our organization, we had an AI team that was trying to build new products, but they were, they were struggling with trying to also maintain Kubernetes. And by being able to come in and provide them with solutions that made their lives easier, they quickly adopted it and became champions, and it started to spread mm -hmm. from there. Because if you make their life easier, they're going to want to use it. You know, water flows downhill. So the gratitude factor, sort of, like, <laughs> you made my life easier, so... Oh, no, I was struggling. Um, Nathan, um, do you have some thoughts about this, or did you want to talk about the the door um, report, the latest? We can go either way. Let's, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll definitely share some of the things that we found in this year's research. If you haven't had a chance to read it yet, go to door.dev, and you can download our latest report. It was just released about three weeks ago. We did a deep dive into platform engineering and trying to understand what are some of the impacts of platform engineering and impacts that organizations and teams and individuals are feeling. We have a lot of great news. We're seeing that uh, teams and organizations where platforms are in place, they tend to have much better uh, self-reported productivity from all of the developers across their team. 
Not surprisingly, we saw that platforms tended to be implemented more so in larger organizations than in small organizations, which obviously makes sense. If the organization was the size of this panel, we probably wouldn't need a platform team. We could just get our work done together, right? So larger organizations is where it shows up. But platform engineering is showing good impacts on things like developer productivity, time spent in the flow, things along those lines. Unfortunately, we aren't seeing it flow through to software delivery performance. In fact, what we're seeing is that oftentimes when a platform is in place, software delivery performance measured both in terms of throughput and stability of changes is actually decreasing. It's going down. And our data doesn't really tell us why that is. I have a bunch of hypotheses, uh, a bunch of ideas around why that might be. Um, but I'll just I'll leave it there for oh. now. I'd, I'd like to hear some of the ideas. OK. Well, well, all right. Uh, so, so one hypothesis that we have is that you know, one of the reasons that you might be implementing a platform is because stability is already an issue. And so if stability was already sort of a pre-existing condition, if you will, right? we had lots of instability when we shipped changes, now let's introduce a platform. Well, maybe that platform just hasn't taken root enough yet, or it hasn't actually addressed some of the uh, sort of contributing factors to that instability. Another theory that we have is that potentially the platform uh, either doesn't provide good feedback mechanisms as you're shipping change through the system. You want good feedback on that change through things like automated tests, as an example. Perhaps the platform isn't providing good capabilities around automated testing. Or maybe it is, but the development teams, the application teams, aren't taking advantage of that. Either of those things, or both, could be true, and that could have some downstream impacts on stability. I think probably another uh, really strong hypothesis, though, is that we didn't put a platform in place to improve our software delivery performance. We put a platform in place to improve things like compliance to policies, uh, security controls. All of these things might in fact, slow down your software delivery, but still be deemed a success when you think about why did we put this platform in place. So I think there are a bunch of reasons why. Um, we don't really know through our data the exact answer, and I would, I would love to hear some of your experiences uh, as well. Yeah, and we'll we'll get to that get to that in a in a minute about uh, we we'll, we, sh we should have some time for for questions. Um, one uh, one thing that I think is on a lot of people's minds is how do you start a platform team? What who, what kinds of capabilities do you need in terms of your your expertise? So one thing that uh, we did well when we started this journey is we identified some senior engineers and some engineers with the right kind of Kubernetes experience and we were able to carve out a team that was focused strictly on building the new platform. So we were able to relieve them of sort of the ongoing operational duties they might have had, shift some of the responsibilities to other team members, and let them be dedicated to this because it takes time. It took, uh, and then we started building in a process that took years of building out the entire infrastructure across all of the regions that we're in, across the, uh, the international regions that we're in. And not just building that, but also building the tools that are going to be later used to improve and build it. So we're not just building a widget, we're building a factory that builds a widget. And that takes time and expertise and it takes sort of dedicated resources. Because if your senior engineers are constantly being pulled into fires or into other projects and in different directions, as happens in most organizations, you're really going to struggle to be able to build out the, the platform that later you're going to try to adopt. So carving out a separate team and having them be dedicated was a key component for us doing that. And that took a lot of leadership buy-in and time for us to really convince them, this is where you want to go. We had to talk about how this is going to later meet our business goals. Say, we know what our business goals are for five years from now. Here's why we're afraid we won't be able to meet them from a technical perspective unless we do this. So we need some dedicated resources, a dedicated team that isn't trying to do other things, that has its own uh, criteria established for how they're a success, and that's how we got started and were able to actually get a lot of traction and build something that later people are happy to use. I think that's a, I think that's a key point about making sure that the, business, the people who hold the purse strings for your organization understand that they need to carve out time for this. The, 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 per, the people can't be putting out fires all the time if, mm -hmm. if, if you're trying to build this foundation for the future. Um, Guillaume? 
Yeah, I just wanted to add on top of this. I agree. Having a, being able to have a dedicated team to this really helps. Uh, really helps get things moving, you know, faster and showing value uh, really fast. Uh, I also wanted to add, uh, in terms of building the team, you know, the kind of folks you want to uh, look for. Obviously, with a certain uh, technical background that fits what you're trying to do. But I think also, as well, uh, soft skills uh, are not to be neglected because since uh, platform engineering should be seen as, or at least the platform that you're building should be seen as a, a product, it's not something that you can impose onto dev teams to force them to use it. So you really have to sell it to them and sh show them the value so they want to adopt it. So there's a lot of, a lot of um, time being spent as a technical person sort of do doing marketing maybe or <laughs> uh, se selling, selling activities to get people to understand what you're trying to do, uh, what, what it can do for them. Because at first, uh, speaking from experience, uh, I was surprised people, they don't really get what you're trying to do and they're not too sure how that fits into uh, with their services, with their products. So really got to have hard skill and soft skills. I think both are important. So try to look for, uh, for people that, are, that fit that, uh, that uh, description. I think you touched on something really, really important there. You know, the question was, how do we get started with platform engineering? And I would posit that no matter where you are, you have a platform in place, even if you haven't talked about it as such. Even if your platform today is the way I get things done is by opening up a ticket and waiting. That's, that's your platform. The ticketing system is your platform. And frankly, as we introduce new ways of working and new ways of thinking about platforms, uh, we're asking people to go on a journey with us of change. And I know we're all engineers and we love to play with the new stuff, but also, let's be honest, we all hate to change, right? We understand and know how to get work done in this way today, and you're asking me to change the way that I'm working. That's hard. This is a change management journey as much as it is a platform journey, and it is really important. You know, we've, we've used words like squishy and soft skills, but these are really, really important pieces of that journey that are gonna contribute to the success or, or the failure of that journey. I could plus 100 to that. Um, we joke a little bit about platform therapy being a job title, but I don't really joke about it because I think it's very true. There are two things that I will give you advice on just from what I've seen, and the first thing is really understand your why. If you start a platform engineering initiative without a clear why, it will fail every single time. And the why isn't just because someone on LinkedIn told me so. It's not a good enough reason. You have to have a real driving factor that you can show value against. And often it'll be related to what the business's goals are within five years, like Kirk said. Um, but it can also be related to the direction of whatever your product is as a whole. The second piece of advice I will give you is a dedicated platform team is excellent, but make sure that you consult the stakeholders from the teams that are impacted by it. This can mean a focus group. I've seen quite a bit of this. This can mean having a couple developers involved in the design conversations around what that experience needs to look like, someone from finance and operations that can come in and say, hey, I need you guys to make sure you're tagging resources this way so I know who's spending my money. It can also mean having someone from leadership in to say, okay, what is valuable for you inside of this? Uh, CTOs have all sorts of opinions on things. And sometimes it's great to involve them in those discussions because at the end of the day, they're the ones signing the checks. But it's also very much about their success too. It's their team at the end of the day. Um, it is a very holistic way of looking at things and it sounds very fluffy and cute, but I promise you, if you really think about involving stakeholders in design conversations, it does make it significantly easier to be successful in the long run. Okay, um, we're, we're uh, running low on time, so I just want to see if there's anyone who wants to a ask a question. There is a microphone, uh, someone way in the back there, or I see you, I see you with a gray shirt there. Um, actually, if you can, yeah, there's, there's some, yeah, microphone over there. And also, I just want to mention that we'll also be, our panelists will stick around for a while afterward if anyone has questions. Go ahead. Awesome. Uh, Christopher Lane with Chick-fil-A, um, and uh, we talk about our customers being engineers, and that's often them, but we also have customers who are platform framework teams who are building additional tooling on top of the tooling we're building, and when we get metrics about developer happiness and things like that, what we get is a mixture of how they feel about those tools 
and our tools together collectively. How do we tease out what the platform is providing and how folks are feeling about the platform versus the other tooling that's in the mix that they use on a day-to-day -day basis? I literally just wrote a framework survey about this sort of thing. And there's two things to think about. The first thing is that often uh, things are disguised as what they actually are. It's often a perception problem. So what I think my interaction point is might actually not be what it is designed to be under the hood. And that's actually a key learning. It tells you you have a perception problem and you need to address why those two things feel mixed. The second thing is, is it's okay to ask targeted questions, but do them in such a way that it's related directly to that thing. So don't just say, how do you feel about the platform? How do you feel about when you have to go do X task? on a scale of one to five, is it too hard? And if that task is directly related to what you're building versus what the other team is building, it gives you a bit more information. You just probably need to dig a little deeper in how you're asking the questions. I would also just caution you to be very careful because some of what I heard in that question, and I don't know if it was your intent or not, but some of what I heard was, uh, we got some negative feedback, but it's not, it's not my job. That's not about me, right? I think you said you work at Chick-fil-A. If, if a customer comes to Chick-fil-A and, and the credit card processing starts to take a long time, they don't care that it's your credit card processor. They care that Chick-fil-A is giving them a bad experience. And so if, if you're getting answers about different parts of the platform, just remember you're asking users, and that's, that's their lived experience. And, and maybe that gives you places to dig in. Maybe it also gives you places for partnership to actually improve that user experience. So just be very careful with that as you try to tease, tease those two things out. Okay, and I believe we're, at, we're just about at time, so um, I, I want to thank, thank uh, Mallory and, and Guillaume and Kirk and Nathan for joining us, and uh, they will stick around for a little while. Um, feel free to ask questions. Um, sorry we didn't get to more questions, but as you can tell, this is a big topic and there's a lot to discuss. Um, something you might want to ask them is how you uh, Communicate the um, impact of your of of your platform engineering initiative to the stakeholders. Obviously, there's a different a different uh, set of priorities for each of those groups of stakeholders. Um, if you're having trouble communicating with one of them in particular, our, our panelists probably have some ideas about that to talk to you about. Um, some some good advice. So uh, thank you very much. I just want to mention also. Uh, I'm editor-in-chief of the News Stack. Uh, we write about platform engineering all the time. We've read, written about the Dora report recently. Um, please, uh, please have a look at what we do and uh, let us know what you think. It's uh, thenewstack.io. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Heather. Thank you.